Hello there. I recently have been observing that 80% or even more number of interviews in digital marketing involve a case study or a strategy. Now, this is true for a range of uh, roles hired, whether it's a junior role, whether it's a senior role, a strategist, media planner for agencies, or even if you're going to client side, even there, it's even more. I think 100% of the interviews on client side involve a case study or a strategy which the candidate will have to work on and it makes sense because it actually gives you a picture overall picture of the caliber and the expertise and the skills of this person in this digital marketing field now in this video that's what i'm going to show you i'm just going to show you an actual case study or a strategy which i worked on and I'm going to take you through that, how to explain that and how did I create that so that it's very clear for you. Now, personally, I have been getting a lot of emails and messages on different channels where people are asking me that we are going for an interview. Can you please guide us and have a look at the strategy or the case study they have asked us to work on? Or even in certain cases, some freelancers have reached out to me regularly reach out to me and tell me that this is my first client I've been or this is my first big client I've been working on this strategy for them can you have a look now to be honest with you like with a full-time job and YouTube I don't get time to obviously look at individual case studies which is fair and people should understand but this is this has been so frequent that I decided a long time ago that I'll work on a video like this but this is probably one of the most difficult videos i have been working on because showing you i mean even on my channel you will see a lot of videos for example this one here about how startups should create strategy but i have not shown the steps or how actually the strategy looks like so i thought this will be super helpful for people because uh, companies ask for strategies even in jobs your manager will ask you or your chief marketing officer will ask you to work on a strategy for a campaign so i decided to put together a video but it was very difficult i wasn't able to understand that how to put this video together and i'm really proud on this it took me a whole day i'm going to explain to you how did i do it and uh, but yeah i mean uh, just just watch it's going to be a little bit longer but i think it's worth it because it's like all of digital marketing together in one one presentation just to give you an idea what you should expect in this video is i actually wanted to create a strategy or a case study so for example if a brand is interviewing me they'll ask me to work on a digital marketing strategy for them for a year or for a particular campaign or in certain cases you just have to do a case study for your client or uh, a new business pitch or whatever it's it's all the same thing it's basically the strategy which you will work on so i was like okay there are different industries even if i go by industry wise i'll have to make a lot of videos so then i decided that i'll have to choose something difficult and random so that i can incorporate all the concepts in there and i can show you the actual process so what i did is because i recently have been working on autocad uh as as a client so what i did is i went to my facebook i was like okay the first ad i'm going to see i will actually work on a strategy for them and when i was scrolling i actually saw one of the competitors of autocad which is trimble i saw an ad from one of their uh, subsidiaries called tecla i had never heard about trimble before but i was shocked when i googled just after that and they i mean they have 2.3 billion us dollars revenue per year so it's a huge company it's a public listed company and they make architecture and uh, softwares for architects design civil engineers and i was like yeah this is niche so if somebody is able to understand how to work a strategy for them it should be very easy for them to actually work on anything else automotive fmcg or anything else based on my opinion so yeah i mean that was the first that i saw and i went uh, i created a strategy with a hypothetical brief a generic brief and it took me uh, a bit more than a day to put this together i actually wanted to do it while uh, creating a video and do it uh, while doing that while shooting the video but it's not feasible to actually 
make a video 24 hours long and nobody will watch it so I tried to squeeze everything in and it's going to be a very interesting video and um, let's jump into my laptop okay so this is our first um, slide of our presentation so where we will just show some brand logos and mention that but there's digital marketing strategy or case study or whatever so moving on to our next slide uh, here you will mention the brief and the objectives it's mostly about what client told you uh, whether you are in an interview they will obviously give you a brief and uh, in case of an strategy obviously the client will give you a brief it might not be always this clear but you will just have to put it precise and brief and tell them in the first slide that see this is our understanding of what your brief is what you told us and this is our understanding of what your objective behind this marketing activity is in this case i assume that tecla has moved to i just researched a little bit and tecla has recently moved to software as a service revenue model before they used to sell like a software and with a key for one device and now they have moved to software as a service like AutoCAD or even Microsoft Office. They moved to Office 365. All the companies are doing this. So I just read it uh, about them that they have moved to this model. So I assume that the strategy is uh, to revamp their whole, this, this kind of questions will be asked in interviews that we want to revamp everything. Tell us uh, how, how do we proceed. So in this case, uh, the first thing is this is the client the client will tell you because we are moving because the benefits are we attract more clients but at the same time the challenge is client retention because client can just subscribe to a few months and move to another software so this is assuming that the client will tell you this uh this is like client sometimes will tell you something haphazard okay this is we want everything but then you will have to dig down with smarter questions and finally uh assume what their brief is what they actually want about this project and what are the objectives and this is the first slide you show to them and this is uh, tell them that this is our understanding of your brief and what do you want to do what are the objectives and then this slide is probably one of the important slides where you see strategy at a glance or you just tell them the contents of the whole strategy or this presentation what are we going to discuss on the left hand side this is the framework i always use the five step pointer or six pointer framework it works i mean it has been always it always has worked for me and overall when you look at this there are five steps of the strategy in some certain cases you have six steps which i'll tell you what are those the first step is objective and brief you understand their brief and define all objectives which we decide which we uh, discussed in the previous slide and understand their business vision because they'll tell you a brief and there will be a long-term business vision behind what they want to do and within the brief and objectives you will understand you will tell them what is your understanding of the market and computers and what kind of audit did you do and owned asset audit which is in this case we are working for tecla you will tell them that uh, you will have to actually go to their assets their website their social media pages and do an audit what is good about them what's bad about them and at the same time do it for the computers as well and take away certain good things about what computers are doing good and uh, learn from their mistakes uh, in certain cases you will divide them into uh, two steps first one will be objective and brief and then the second one will be uh, the market analysis but in this case i just put it in one pointer the second one is who <laughs> obviously the audience analysis because tecla creates bim softwares and design softwares for architects who design buildings bridges that's all tecla does so in this case the audience is very specific <coughs> because it's just the architects who use these design softwares and the companies who the design companies because there are dedicated companies who design uh, for make designs for buildings and bridges so we have a very niche audience and it's a b2b audience as well because tecla has to target b2b companies uh, employees of design companies and uh, then you will do audience persona and sizing that okay on facebook how many architects can we target uh, on linkedin how many can we target in certain cases you will find youtube more uh, uh, useful because that audience you are trying to target is mostly on youtube in certain cases like let's say makeup you will find them on instagram and snapchat so you have to do this uh, audience persona that what are the persona which we will discuss in detail and you have to just tell them what are the sizes available of this audience on each platform and then uh, the third point will be where once you know the audience you have to decide that what channels we should use as i told you for uh, 
a makeup brand instagram and uh, snapchat is the hero channel so similarly based on this you will have to uh, the third step is where you define the third step is where you actually define that what channels you will be using and what inventory selection even on channels even on youtube what kind of channels you will be targeting what kind of videos you will be targeting you don't want to show your ads like for example in this case tecla ads on entertainment content doesn't make sense so similarly you'll have to tell them that uh, investment and expected deliverables how much shall we invest on each of the channels and what deliverables are we expecting how much traffic how much leads and stuff like that and then once you define your strategy that the objectives the audiences the the channel mix then we move to messaging and formats that based on the objective of this strategy or the company what kind of messaging should we use like uh, for example, if we are selling a Nissan Sunny, uh, we will focus on something called uh, EMI starting from 299 dirhams. But if you are selling a Mercedes, then obviously you focus more on luxury. So that's what you define in your strategy as well. Then the last step is, is it working? You have to tell them what is the right approach towards reporting. See, you don't just look at how many leads did you generate on the day first you look at how many people are coming to the website how many are reading about your software because it's a long-term decision in this case for example so you basically for each client you develop that what metrics shall we focus on we will focus on clicks in the beginning we'll focus on retention and stuff like that and then obviously you will in this uh, particular section you will tell them that what kind of ad tech tools do you suggest them to use and how will we use them to let's say collect audiences and reach audiences which i will define everything in the strategy i'm just telling you that this is where you will focus on this is the strategy at a glance this is how your strategy or your case study should look like at least these components now based on the budget and uh, the type how focused or how interested you are in that interview how much time you want to invest you can make it shorter but it should look like this <clears throat> so let's jump into our um, first section which is market overview in this section we will look at tecla assets and their competitors and take some learnings and overall how does the market look like now um, because this is a BIM software and design software, Tecla uh, has BIM and design software. So we first have to look at overall picture like uh, because this is directly related to civil industry, construction industry. So we will look at overall market. Assuming in this strategy, I have focused on that this marketing strategy is for GCC specifically, UAE and um, KSA mostly. So I went to, there are a lot of tools like Statista. I'll put a link down in the description below where you get free uh, data statistics about a lot of things. So for example, if you look at this, I will not spend a lot of time on this because uh, you, you, based on your client, you just go and search for stuff relevant to you on Statista and there are other tools as well. So for example, I'm just giving them an idea that value of projects in design because that is the that is their potential market. The All the construction projects which are in design phase now in Middle East and North Africa and I'm just telling them the key learnings from here that UAE and KSA has projects worth 435 billion USD in design that this is about their market. So digital marketing is not just about Google Ads, Facebook Ads. You just have to show your client or the company that uh, listen, I have a business perspective as well. I have I am able to see the whole picture. I am able to see the business as well. And then obviously you will focus on the digital marketing efforts. So in this case, I'm just highlighting that UAE and KSA always strive for creative structural and design marvels, which is something you read about the, the markets so that the client understands. See, from this particular slide, the client understands that I have done due diligence. I have put some homework behind it. I'm understanding their business. I'm understanding their market. And similarly, See, for example, KSA is planning Neom estimated to be costing 500 billion. Now, when I went to Google, I researched about uh, construction projects in UAE, KSA. You come across these kind of things. You just have to highlight them here. And uh, if you see that Saudi Arabia and UAE are leading in terms of the design projects. Similarly, this again is from Statista. I'm just highlighting that UAE is the ninth biggest construction design firm. Ninth biggest design construction firm is in UAE. So UAE is a small country overall. When we compare all the design industry uh, companies, the ninth biggest in the world is based in UAE. So this is something about their market, so which you have to highlight. And this data you will get from Statista and other tools. 
Then again, I'm just telling them, okay, see, this is your potential. This is your market. This is something about your market and your industry specifically. Then I'm showing this, that architecture industry revenue in United Arab Emirates from 2010 to 2019, that this is on rise. If you see the highlight, here is yet it is on rise. Okay, it's booming. It's good. You have a potential market and it's still on rise. Every year there are <coughs> a lot more construction projects in design in UAE. And then um, you, I show again that value of construction contracts awarded in Saudi Arabia in 2022 with a projection by 2021. And I'm showing that this is increasing. I'm highlighting these data that uh, the building sector was worth 11.97 billion US doll dollars in 2020 and 2021. It's even more. And uh, now I told them something about their market. I told them something about uh, the future of the market and the trends and how do I see the overall business. Uh, then you have to tell them that, okay, there are some challenges as well. So I understand the business. I understand the potential and I understand the challenges as well. You have to highlight it a bit so that they understand that you understand the business and the market. Okay, uh, because they are mostly into BIM softwares, Tecla. So we are telling them that there are researches done and there are some challenges BIM software companies face. For example, in this case, that main barriers to implementation of building information modeling according to construction industry professionals or so research was done with construction industry professionals which is their target audience and i'm telling them that for example no client demand or lack of in-house expertise or lack of training so people uh, companies bim software companies face challenges selling their softwares because there is lack of training our architect will not switch to a new uh, software unless there is a proper training structure so these are the challenges if you see there are numerous here you can pause the video and go through them but this is all relevant so why i'm highlighting it here is because this needs to be considered while creating target audience groups and messaging because one of the messaging should be free training uh, courses available every month or whatever you can derive a lot of things from here but i'm just showing them what are the challenges that there is research done behind it and this is from statista i think as well usually you should put a source here because i have it in the footer notes you are not able to see that but usually it should be on the presentation because it looks authentic and uh, they know that you're just not talking uh, in the dark so uh, the next slide I have here is preferred building information modeling software, which is BIM software, which Tecla sells, uh, used in the construction sector in United Arab Emirates or United States in 2018. I'm telling them that Autodesk products, which is Revit and AutoCAD. See, they will understand that, okay, I'm not from this industry, but I know that the two uh, biggest softwares uh, in terms of market share Revit and AutoCAD both are from Autodesk because when I researched I researched a lot and I came to know that they both are from Autodesk company so these things tell the client in the first few slides that you have done your homework and you understand the market so here I'm just showing them that in your uh, area of expertise or your area of business line of business these are the top uh, in terms of top companies in terms of market share because this we will derive some good things from these companies and then the next slide is importance of current building uh, BIM softwares investment according to construction profiles worldwide. Uh, so this is research done by again Statista. It's a free tool. You get a lot of details. So there was a research done that wh when does what does a company consider before investing in a BIM software because it's expensive is training on BIM. The first thing they look at is do they have good training material available uh, software that supports bim developing internal collaborative bim workflows so this is very specific to their uh, industry but the highlight here is within our target audience training is our priority it will help us later in developing the strategy so you have to show all this kind of stuff which is relevant obviously if you are working on an automated motor brand you go to statista you go to google you'll find a lot of trends and authentic sources and statistics which you put here but as a story that they should make sense first for example in this case i highlighted the market then i highlighted the potential in the market then i highlighted the challenges in the market then i highlighted what are the target audience what are their considerations what 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 is their main priorities so after you show them uh, the market analysis overview then we move to brand and competitor audit now we look at the brand assets like uh, their website their social media pages and competitors and we take some learnings from them so i'll just quickly run through these you can pause the video obviously to go through details if i miss anything so moving on to competitors i'm telling them that um, tecla this is all my research <coughs> tecla 
has two verticals one is bim modeling softwares and one is design architecture workflow and communication softwares and i'm telling them within bim these are the softwares which are your computers and within design and architecture auto revit because it does both like tecla and there is autocad as well so once you show them that okay this is uh, based on our research these are your computers then we directly jump into their social media handles and we give them a picture like this for example i took the top two autocad and revit and compared it to the tecla which is our client and i'm showing them their social media pages so for example if you compare here the first uh, learning you see is they have 2.2 million followers on Facebook, 1.3 and Tecla has just 11,000. So this is one area of focus for them. You get it from here and later you use it in your strategy. And then if you look at, they don't have Instagram Tecla. And, but in LinkedIn, Tecla is leading. It has uh, more than more subscribed followers than uh, both of them. And in terms of YouTube, they are just doing okay. <coughs> so this is you show them a picture that where do you stand and you take some learnings in this case facebook uh, is lacking uh, because now why is it important because they're one of their objectives is increased fan base and also uh, i mean when comparing to the computers uh, when you have a lot of followers on facebook it looks authentic as well as when you have a large fan base you have a community you need less marketing budget to reach out to people because your organic growth uh, organic reach will be higher than uh, so moving on to the next one so takeaway so you don't just have to show them you have to tell them what are the takeaways based on your research and the comparison now all the leading computers are focusing on content marketing now i checked their social media pages they create a lot of content they have websites they have blogs and based on the research here it's again from statista i use statista a lot uh, so, uh, what like uh, all the leading computers are focusing on content marketing, and as per the stats, 93% of the B2B marketers use blog posts as content marketing tactics, which is somehow lagging in Tecla. So, you just have to tell them the overall takeaway is three points, but they should be, I mean, bullseye. 89% of SaaS users turn to YouTube to learn. Okay, this is one learning because later we'll show that. Okay, you have to focus on content marketing on YouTube as well because. Training is a priority for uh, your audience. So you just tell them the takeaways and then moving uh, to deep dive into computers. So it's not, I mean, you literally, I, for me, this uh, this particular presentation took me more than a day to present, to, to, to create. So I have, uh, so for example, I went to the computers pages and I saw what kind of ads they are running. And if you don't know how to check what kind of ads your computers are running, which ones are working for them and which ones are not, I have this video here, which will give you an idea to about all this, that how to check what kind of ads your computers are running, what is working for them, what's not working for them. And it gives you a kind of an idea that how you should develop your creatives. So for example, this screenshot from Autodesk, this was one of their campaigns which was running. And I highlight that AutoCAD has created a LinkedIn group to help their customers to get tips, helps and updates. And that's why they have a lot of engagement on their LinkedIn. I saw that the interaction rate is high. They have huge number of comments and likes and shares. Autodesk runs always on digital campaigns to remarket, engage and increase follower base, which you will also know from um, this tool, the video I mentioned, uh, how to check what kind of campaigns they are running and they run localized content across geographies i saw in uae they are running separate ads they are running separate ads for uh, let's say us because the buildings they show the type of messaging they have is different which again you will know from this particular tool in this video about how to check all these details so similarly i did some deep dive into procore and autodesk and i have highlighted what I observed and learned from there. For example, they use attractive ad sets with minimal distraction and CTA. For example, Pro this is about Procore here. So similarly, then I went to their websites and I saw that Autodesk uses efficient first party long life data collection using content marketing. So if you want to download a brochure or any training material or a case study, uh, you have to enter your first name, last name, uh, an email address. So that's how they collect the first party audience. This is one good thing about their websites. And then again, deep dive into computers. I saw that Autodesk got a whooping 26 million users on their websites in the last six months. 
Okay. So this is from similar web tool, um, which is mentioned. I'll, I'll just put a link in the description below about uh, where I discuss all these tools a digital marketer should know. This is from similar web, by the way. I saw that 56% traffic comes from search. Clearly demonstrates that the importance of SEO and SEM, how much Autodesk is focusing on these two channels. So this this is a very uh, the high priority channel for Autodesk. So we should look into it and see how we leverage this as well because they're getting 56% of the traffic from these two channels. Then 176 users came from Google Ads. So they are focusing a lot on Google Ads. This is where we start our research and how we should use Google Ads for Tecla. So, and again, I have a lot of details. This is again from similar web. And uh, again, um, this is Autodesk relies heavily on GDN. This is again from similar web research. And then we move to Tecla audit. So I'm just telling you, so you do it about uh, for one computers. You know, if you have a lot of time, you want to create a beautiful strategy, you focus on two computers, then you move to the audit of the company you are working for. For example, for Tecla, the first thing I checked is Google. And what did I find? Uh, the mistakes. Google real estate needs to be used wisely. One more headline can be used to add brand names. So for example, I saw Tecla ad here and you see that how intelligent uh, the Excel uh, exceed BLM, BIM company see their ad and Tecla ad. This has a lot of real estate. So I'm just saying that we should add more headlines need to utilize site links uh, when bidding on branded keywords the ad copy has to be more exciting than the organic results <clears throat> so if you see on their ad it's just i mean tecla software integrated design and uh, analysis it should be more 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 powerful than that so this is my basically my first view on their google ads they are running and then if you see here wrong implementation of dynamic ads tecla is promoting revit as a brand <laughs> if you see here this is a tecla ad and i don't know uh, when i search for revit software they are using revit software integrated design and analysis they are promoting as if they are promoting revit software and if somebody clicks on it they see a tecla it's not a good user experience so this was one of the mistakes now more than your strategy how you tell them that how they should run ads is it's important to point out mistakes in what they are doing now it just took me a one day and i found a lot of mistakes so this will give you like kind of a leverage in your interview and they will understand that how serious you are how birds eye view at the same time you have and then uh, missed opportunities for example when i look at revit alternatives when i search for revit they have an ad and they're promoting revit but for example an architect using revit or if he is researching and he found okay revit but it's expensive the first keyword they'll search for is revit alternatives and they're not bidding on this keyword they're not there so this is uh, one more uh, so Revit alternatives is one of the top search keywords I'm just telling them that what are the missed opportunities and then again I'm doing YouTube audit I'm telling them uh, so this is a uh, social blade and um, I think it's um, a channel and so channelytics uh, this is another software I think it's called channelytics uh, so what I saw that uh, user using wider metadata, using prompting thumbnails, adding chapters, Tecla YouTube content strategy is good, but there is a room for content optimization. It was really good. And I'm just still, still telling them that you should use wider metadata because uh, I checked that what kind of tags they are using. They were using very less. So I'm just telling them what uh, I found in their YouTube advertising and their assets. Then again, uh, when I did the website audit, I, I used SEMrush. So the user experience can be enhanced by highlighting ask to contact you section and contact us form should be available on top to collect data on contact page. Uh, Tecla should include blog community section on their website to improve. So this is my top level strategy about their website. And when I went to the website, there is no audience collection, tracking and remarketing strategy because I checked with different tools that if they have any pixels implemented on their website, which I couldn't find. So I'm highlighting that as well. Uh, I mean, you can't run good marketing campaigns, digital marketing campaigns without uh, pixels and tracking. So some pages don't exist. For example, call us now. You click on that link. It doesn't exist. Nobody's looking at Google Analytics that uh, the error messages on certain pages so that they can remove. So similarly, I checked Tecla website audit. I'm showing them that they need SEO and SEM strategies for non-branded keywords. 
then uh, I check their display website, display advertising, and Tecla needs to switch from static to rich media formats. It's too static. I mean, it's like, it's it's too static. It's it's boring. Use attention grabbing copy and less distracting ads. See the num the copy they have is it's it's too cluttered. Use multiple sets for A/B testing because I found on a multiple websites they're using the same copy. They're not doing any kind of A/B testing. Uh, then. Uh, social media audit uh, use of hashtag is inconsistent I even checked the campaign hashtag why let different come in way or better needs to be used throughout all social media pages so they are using a, a hashtag hashtag is like a baby once it's born you need to take care of it and then they are not using it anywhere else it doesn't make sense once you come up with a hashtag which you are using use it across all the content so that it, it makes sense and uh, then I found that uh, one of their content, one of their content pieces on their, I think, LinkedIn, there is uh, no QA on the content. The hashtag is used by spam content creators to generate followers in return. So they're using a hashtag follow for follow, which is like a spam hashtag. And I don't know, I mean, there's no QA. So this was another problem I figured out and a lot of others because this video will be long. So you tell them basically in this section that this is your computer, this is you, this is their good things, this is your good things, and this is you, where you need to improve. So kind of their website, social media pages, it tells them that you know your stuff. And uh, now we move to the second section, which is our audience. In this section, uh, you map brand engages existing clients to digital platforms. You tell them, okay, if you are going uh, for architects, we'll find them here 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 and here which i'll show you how to do that use tools to identify their uh, demographics and media habits segment them based on their desired purchase intent create personas and sizing so based on <coughs> based on uh, my research my profiling i told them see there are three types of personas you should target because every company has different persona for example uh, i i once you uh, worked for um, Astra clinics so the, they had a campaign where they were targeting 13 to 19 year old uh, females uh, for free gynae consultancy now in this case you have two persona one is those uh, 13 to 19 year old females and their mothers or their parents so there are two different persona because to mothers you have to have a different message different targeting and to the Kids, the teenagers, you need to have different targeting because they are active on different kind of uh, channels and you need to have different messaging like are you facing these problems, free consultancy. Uh, to mothers, you tell uh, something like is your kid facing something like this, free consultancy. So the persona is basically based on if you have an audience and within that audience, some of them have different online behavior, some of them have different online behavior and each of them will engage with a different message. That's why you create different kind of persona and you have a dedicated message and targeting for each persona. So in this case, I realized that one is engineers and architects <coughs> like structural bridge engineers who actually use their softwares the, B, the Tecla provides those are one persona because they are directly using these softwares the second one is contractors and owners of the companies they don't use this software their companies does so they are kind of decision makers as well in this case that we what kind of software we should use and then students because you have to target students because when they finish their btech civil uh, engineering uh, if you target them you keep create a top of mind awareness and they probably engage them with uh, free trainings free trials when they become engineers they start working for these companies they would prefer your software so it's like a long term so these are the three uh, persona i created so you have to create similarly for your client or the company you are doing case study for okay uh, after you are done with uh, your persona then you do something like this for example this software this particular tool is called spark toro it's an online tool free again a lot of features are free uh, i would suggest to go to this particular video or this but the link in the description to check all the tools that digital marketers should know so spark toro you go there you i searched for what are the people who engage with content related to bim softwares i found that those people 
top words in their bios is software construction top hashtags they engage with is construction again aec engineering and frequently used phrases these are the phrases because this will be helpful for you to create custom audiences to target these people or even on uh, twitter you can target people who engage with certain uh, <coughs> hashtag so this spark toro gives you some very important information along with information like uh, here's what this audience follows, visits and engages with, social media accounts they follow and uh, what kind of websites they visit and all, all these details. So you are again telling them that, okay, this is your persona and this is how they behave on internet so that it will help you to create audiences later. Then you tell them that based on your audience, there are uh, different. So there is a path purchase for your uh, audience. For example, in this case, problem aware. They know that they have a pain point or a problem to solve within their scope of business, but aren't sure if there is a solution. So if your software, for example, in this case, because I couldn't do a lot of more research, but if Tecla, I'll talk to the client, I'll ask them, what does, does Tecla, Tecla have a USP? Do they have solve a particular problem which other softwares don't? So then I'll target this kind of audience because there are some people who are problem aware, they know this is our issue, but they don't know there's a solution. So you can have a messaging which tells us, okay, this is what our software can do. Similarly, there are solution aware, these people know that there is a solution, but don't know about Tecla. <clears throat> So there is people who are looking for these kind of software. So you just have to tell them that Tecla is one of the companies who do that. Then there are brand aware people who already know about Tecla. And then there are hot leads who are researching and want to subscribe to Tecla or any of the computers. So you just kind of divide this audience in these four types and develop a messaging which engage, which is engaging for each of them separately. Then uh, creating personas as we discussed. So for example, in this case, combining the research and creating buckets based on the channels and communications needed. So, for example, these are our detailed audiences uh, with some pictures, which makes sense for them. For example, uh, let's say clients of the engineers, contractors, influencers as content writers, creators like MR, RTA. For example, I'll just give you an example. What does this mean? Now, here I'm telling them that clients of these design companies are your audience as well because RTA, Roads and Transports Authority, when they go to a design company, the design company sends them a design. They have internal teams of structural engineers who evaluate those designs. But what happens is if RTA decides to use, let's say, Tecla, they will tell the suppliers, the design companies, that you have to use Tecla or some software where you will be able to send us the software and we sh it should basically be compatible. So they are sometimes RT and MR and big companies like these, they dictate to the design companies that you have to develop a design for us, but it should be in this particular software. So that's why they are one of the audiences here as well. And you have to obviously, when you're presenting as a case study or a business pitch, you have to explain this, but I'm just going through quickly to give you an idea. <clears throat> when combining the research and creating buckets, then I'm telling them, an ideal persona of this. I'm just uh, explaining these persona. Why did I divide? For example, Jake is an engineer in an architecture and design construction firm. Jack uses BIM softwares every day, but he is used to a certain environment. He will switch to Tecla if he finds it more compatible, more efficient, ease of integration, additional functionalities. He visits YouTube if he is stuck, LinkedIn, Instagram for social networking. So I tell them each of these persona, they have a certain online behavior which will help you to dictate which channels we should focus on, what messaging should we have. <laughs> Similarly, I have given a persona of each of the four personas I have devised. And then you do the sizing of the persona, for example, on uh, LinkedIn, on, for example, this case, this is LinkedIn. The target audience is 11,000 because I put structural architecture, construction, design, civil engineering, real estate, all of these um, industries. And I found that there are 11,000 people within this. It gives you uh, some estimates about the money you need to spend. Similarly, uh, in case of, uh, let's say, Oracle Blue Kai, I'll target these audiences and I'm showing them how many people are available there for targeting. So after you uh, discuss all of about the audience, you move to channel mix, which is where, which was the third part in our uh, framework. <clears throat> In this case, I'm just again using, um, for example, choosing the right channels only after we know our audience, utilizing tools to understand attributes of our audience. For example, job titles, demographics, socioeconomics. So this screenshot is from, uh, let's say, Spark Toro to just demonstrate that I can uh, target check 
what my audience what are these parameters about my audience if they are talking about something if they have a certain designation so then you show them where do we focus this is knowing the audience and their behavior doesn't make it much simple the journey is purchasing tecla is very complicated because obviously it's a big decision for a company so i'm just showing that it's a complicated journey so based on this we will choose uh, the channels <clears throat> for example it's not uh, we can merge the journey with traditional top down funnel because it won't follow a top to down funnel approach so this is how the journey will look like let's say uh, brand knowledge then research then they will consider then they will purchase and then advocacy that one company will tell their colleagues that okay you know what they, i'm using this software this is amazing so we have to focus on all these then interesting but how do we do it so then we create something De tecla deployment at a glance so when you are used to uh, this particular slide you can create it for your client in like 30 minutes so in this case for example i'm telling consumer stage uh, as we discussed problem aware solution aware brand aware in market experience tecla i'm telling them that how we will target each of these segments you don't just have to show generic okay problem aware you have to then show that what should be the messaging pillars for each of them how you will target those and what are the strategy pillars just pause on this slide and have a look so that you can create it for your client as well translating this into activation while the solution is simple that we will use precision marketing the basically because it's very niche audience uh, about tecla uh, so we have to use the right audience then right placement and the right message and how will we do it the first chunk goes to highest intent search as we check that our top computers they their 56% of the traffic comes from the google search and seo organic so um utilize dynamic ads utilize responsive ads keyword segmentation based on intent ad copies based on search query so these are like best practices in search this is what we will do with an example then building our search decision tree for example um this is our uh, how our search decision tree will look like i'm just showing them that uh, we'll have different ad groups like core brand generic keywords competitor keywords and within those keywords we will identify low intent and high intent because for example in this case uh, if somebody is searching for generic bim for students it's a high intent because a student is looking for what is a bim software for students is high intent and latest bim softwares might not be as high intent as possible i'm just giving you an example so based on these we will set up different rules in our search campaigns to prioritize high intent keywords <coughs> and with tecla prospecting and abm linkedin is an obvious choice because uh, when it comes to tecla they target design companies for example there are probably let's say 50 or 100 or 200 within 1000 it will be at least within 1000 companies in uh, uae they have to target so account based marketing in linkedin is a good way to do that they create a list of companies they want to target and in linkedin you can target people who work for certain companies this is called account based marketing if you are interested to know more about account based marketing this is my video which is detailed about what account based marketing is and how do you do it and then i'm showing that that you can use tools like lead feeder to know more about first party audience and create stronger abm models <clears throat> Then we jump to using biddable performance channels for prospecting and engagement. So for example, I'm giving them example that provides wider reach, engaging formats, tactical retargeting, which means uh, YouTube, Google, and Facebook because they have high reach. So I'm just giving them an example that on YouTube, uh, these are the channels, for example, Construction Cambodia, SourceCAD, uh, they have like 300,000 subscribers. So anyone who goes to SourceCAD channel to watch any kind of videos, that means they are learning about any bim or design software so our youtube uh, ads should be targeted to videos on these channels because on youtube google ads or dv360 when you are running a youtube campaign you can target your campaign to only certain videos on certain channel so these are obvious choice so autocad i'm just giving them an example that how will we leverage these channels and then uh, i'm just giving them an example that we can use a uh, third party audience for precision marketing for example ad point intent the big five let's say the big five it's about it's it's like a it's like a marketing event it's like a big event who uh, held by dmg events and uh, where all the companies come to present their uh, tools and softwares about construction 
So the people who visit there, they're from construction industry, design industry. So I'm just saying that you can uh, kind of, you have to use, you have to uh, talk to these companies because these companies sell data of all the attendees uh, and then you can target campaigns on these particular audiences. And then you can use uh, Construction Week, for example. It's a magazine. You create custom audiences, people who go to uh, Construction Week, you target them on other channels. Or you create a campaign, display campaign, and target only Construction Week and websites like this. So anyone who goes to Construction Week is kind of our audience, and you have to show them ads there. So this is how you leverage different kinds of data. Then you leverage first party data and reduce reliance on paid media. So this is kind of uh, set up smart uh, workflows and automate the process of keeping your audiences connected with Tecla. You can pause the video and have a look at what I suggest. And then uh, the next thing is when we are software as a uh, service, let's go for affiliate influencer marketing. And then I'm showing that engage micro and macro influencers to drive sales with coupon codes and referral bonuses. Uh, for example, CAD in black. This is a channel which has 169,000 subscribers. They just talk about CAD. Why don't use them as influencer marketing so that we tell them do a review of our software and pay them obviously it's marketing again or uh, something like that, engage them. And um, this is what I suggest. Then you have uh, a rough budget allocation and deliverables that Google search we will uh, spend, let's say this number of amount uh, and let's say $4,800. And we run this campaign from this duration. This is the amount of impressions and clicks we are expecting. And you do it, obviously you can do it on all the tools, estimated CPCs, CPMs, and then you show them the graphical uh, representation of our budget allocation, which is should be in line with our uh, strategy so far. Once you are done with the channel mix, then we move to our uh, fourth point, which is what, what do we say in our ads? And then for example, first let's see what industries are talking about us, pain points with computers. So the first thing you do about uh, what should be your messaging, what should your ads talk about, is you go to websites like Quora. Check, uh, is uh, Tecla a good software? Is AutoCAD a good software? There'll be people who are talking about these softwares. For example, in this case, uh, this person is saying Tecla is a specialized in steel structures and more accurate and quick for companies that are specialized in complex detailing. Revit is a multidisciplinary software for architects how people are talking about you and your computers gives you an idea that what their pain points are and you can kind of take some learnings about what your ads should talk about this is like a high level uh, uh overview then you move uh, i mean your messaging has to be audience centric elevate the brand be flexible and scalable I'll directly switch to the next slide, which is that leads us to three pillars of communication for Tecla. One, building awareness, educating people and driving conversions. And how we do it is uh, we move from static formats because they have been using static formats to personalized DCO, dynamic, data-driven, flexible, scalable and adaptive. And for this, we use tools like DoubleClick Studio, which obviously they are not using. They are far, far away from it. Spark Toro, Social Bakers and HotSuite. And... Uh, they have all mass ads targeting everyone. So we are telling them that we have to create data driven as the personas. Then we have to create separate campaigns for each persona and have a dedicated message which is engaging for them. For example, for a student, we have to have a different message. For a structural engineer, we have to uh, have a different message. In order to start with an impact, we have to traction around the branding. We have to be consistent. Uh, one big idea, for example, different but better. Tecla is a bit expensive, so we can use this hashtag and throughout. Uh, and you just have to have one big idea. I mean, all the big companies, all their advertising is around one big idea. For example, in this case, I suggest different but better. So, so because this is one pain point in construction industry that people don't want to switch. They have been working on certain software for five years. So that's why, I mean, different but better. It rings a bell to them. So... I mean, it was, I just worked on the whole strategy in one day. So this is what I came. So obviously, if you think more, you can come up with even better idea. But I, I like this one. Uh, mapping messaging to targeting layers. For example, when you are prospecting, you have to have a different message. When uh, you are targeting people who have already been on your website, let's say you are doing remarketing, 
you have to have a different messages uh, prominent hashtags and branding subtitle ct and offering i mean whatever they are not doing and i'm just giving them this for example this is what i created you saw their ads on display it was boring so this is what i created uh, I'm just giving them an example. Then this is my demo. I'm just showing them. Obviously, I'm not a creative director, but I'm just telling them how it should look. When you show this to a creative director, this carousel, he can come up with much, much, much more uh, better ads. So I just put them together in half an hour that, okay, you have a carousel like this and use a headline like this. Then use this. For example, I use this design. Students use this picture and stuff like that. You just have to guide them. This will not be the final ads, obviously. You just have to guide them that if they show to a creative director, they have to come an idea around this because we structured our audiences like this. Mapping messaging to targeting layer. For example, for this segment, we need to provide an incentive to engage or click. So, for example, uh, use something like this on your website. And then mapping messaging to targeting layer. So for remarketing, you have to something like this. For example, looks like you were in a hurry. We have unlocked 45 days free trial for you. Come up with offers. And this should be visible only to people who already been to website. And this will be really engaging. You'll be like, yeah, yeah, wow. I checked it. I didn't subscribe. Okay, they're giving me an offer. So this is just examples and guidance and supporting with programmatic native banners that sit within the content for example this one i'm just giving them an example that a company like this because it's training driven it's content driven so we have to focus on native ads and something like this so people can click on it then we have this video i just put together this video in five minutes so i'll just uh, let you watch this one Okay, so after we are done with content, then we go to the data and for example, without data and tracking, online marketing is like driving a car with eyes closed. It's a subtle way to tell them that there are no pixels on your website. This is very important. And where we will focus on this section is data collection, enrichment and activation and tracking and reporting, ad tech recommendations as well. Um, so, for example, for Tecla, what I suggest is while data is the center of our strategy, we ensure efficient ways. So we tell them a basic architecture of how we are uh, uh, going to collect and enrich your data. For example, we are telling them that they should use tools like Talium, Marketo and Liana. And I checked actually they are using Marketo already. So I'm telling them that you should feed data, first party data from websites, social media channels, existing contacts, CRM into your data hub, which is Telium, Marketo, Liana, or any similar tools. Second party data like data partnerships, as I told you, big five uh, from DMG events. Research partners, third party, obviously purchase behavior, paid media campaigns and activations. All this data should go into your data hub, store there. Uh, even from pixels and then uh, you use email uh, edm campaigns to have different workflows so if somebody came to your website uh, they filled downloaded a brochure filled up uh, their information that how should your edm look like you have to send them let's say an email after every five days in first introduce tecla then after five days you get them an offer then send them a free ebook and similarly uh, you can use this data for audience creation lookalike audiences dynamic remarketing media buying obviously this is i'm just quickly going through this but you'll have to focus a bit more if you are serious about it or if you are doing let's say a strategy for uh, 10 million dollars a year budget so you have to explain all this but this is how your strategy should look like like I'm giving you an example. If I was uh, interviewing for uh, Tecla and I create this strategy, 99%, uh, I'm sure that I'll, I'll get through this round. They'll be really impressed with this. So all the webinars, case studies, resources, brochures would only available after filling up a lead form from which enrich the data hub. So this is one more recommendation. Then um, I'm telling them that they should move from uh, static reporting to dynamic reporting and create a uh, data studio dashboard like this. Or if I'm a, uh, you hire me, I'll create something like this for you. 
if you hire me as an agency or a freelancer i'll create something like for this for you and i have created a lot of dashboards for example i have provided a qr code here they can scan and at the same time check that okay you will provide us a real time reporting dashboard like this these are some like brownie points i have seen that these 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 when your business is these kind of things so that's why i'm telling them um after this the tracking approach that utm to be used on all channels i clicked on some of their ads no utms all the events uh, should be created in ga to have complete view of their user journey i don't know i don't have access to their ga but this is my recommendation if they are doing it okay if not they should do it campaign manager 360 should be used to have control over assisted conversion reporting and uh, because it's a long journey uh, somebody who comes to know about Tecla will not buy it right away. It probably sometimes takes three months, six months. So they have to use assisted conversions to basically later see if six months of ads, campaigns and content uh, actually made me to buy Tecla. Later, I'll go to Google and I made a decision. I talked to my manager. I go to Google Tecla BIM software and I purchase it. As per uh, Google Ads, the conversion will go to only Google Ads. But actually, there will be a lot of channels working behind it. So I'm just telling them that for your kind of business, uh, assisted conversion reports are very important so that you can attribute that which channel actually bought this uh, particular conversion. And uh, that's it. I mean, this is how a strategy or a case study should look like. If you follow exactly this, I guarantee you that you'll get the job. Because I have been interviewing a lot of people for multiple roles and I have attended interviews and I know what kind of case studies and strategies I put together. So this is like your reference. You should follow this and I hope it will help you in any way. Uh, thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.